Hey guys, welcome to the second part of the tutorial. Hopefully if you liked the first part, you're back for more and let's get started. So if you have all the code from the previous part, you'll notice actually uh, we made a sm small mistake. Pixel struck that we created into the helicopter and create a helicopter out of pixels, but we didn't. We ended up using a rectangle, which is all a pixel is, but let's use the pixel now that we made and create the helicopter with pixels. So we put in pixel, we give it a size of self dot size which comes from the helicopter size property and then the color we get through the two loops that we're iterating for row and column of the array of colors that we have in here and this should now work and it should give us the exact same result except we're using all the components that we made perfect looks exactly exactly the same so if if we want to then focus on something else, uh, I think we should focus on uh, collision detection and making sure that we can pause and restart the game when collision detection, like when we hit an obstacle. So first, let's let's see how, let's try to uh, design our um, uh, pausing uh, functionality. So the easiest way to test it would be let's just create a button and see if we can do it with a button and then we can embed it elsewhere. So create a button and call it pause. And the action that it will do is self.timer.upstream.connect.cancel. This should cancel our timer that we have uh, whenever we press the button. Uh, we don't see the button because we actually need to put it within the Z stack. Uh, and if you're familiar with Z stacks, uh, they place uh, things one in front of the other. So the, the further down you put it in the Z stack, the more in front it's going to appear. So that's why we put it at the bottom. And there it is. If we hit pause, it cancels our timer, which cancels all the animations and movement in our app, which is all we want from a pause. And we're gonna use this when the game is over, essentially. When we hit an obstacle, we need something to stop the game, and that's what this functionality is. For the resume functionality, all we're gonna do is just copy and paste the timer initial initialization at the top and do it again, and in initialize our timer uh, with publish at one-tenth of a second on main, uh, and so on. If you just put this exact same code in there, it should work. So after we pause it, we should be able to... Oh, the buttons appear on top of each other because we're in a Z stack. So if we put them inside a V stack, then that should put them uh, on top of each other. There we go. So pause it, resume it, and we're back to playing. It seems to work pretty well. So now we have our code for pausing and resuming the game, which is pretty neat. Now we don't need it as buttons. So let's take this code and move it down and create functions that perform essentially the same thing and we can call those functions whenever we need them. So let's comment out the code so we can just use it as a reference. Uh, create a function called pause and copy the code from the button we had just created. Create a function called resume and do the same thing. And let's get rid of the old code. So now we have functions that perform those two things and we can call those whenever we need them. Cool. So next thing we need to do is the collision detection. So let's create a function called collision detection. And the way we're going to do this is essentially we need to subtract the X and Y coordinates of the helicopter and the obstacle. So it's going to be a very simple if statement. Uh, it's going to look long, but it's not that hard. So we're going to take the x coordinate of the helicopter, subtract the x coordinate of the obstacle, and if it is less than sort of the distance from the center of each object to the edges. So the, the width of the helicopter, the whole width is 50 pixels because there's 5 pixels of 10 pixels width. So half of it's 25 and the width of the obstacle is 20 pixels, so half of it is 10. So if you kind of think about when an, a, a collision would occur is sort of if you combine 25 plus 10, that would be when there would be a collision on the X axis. And a good practice to do is uh, just put this in absolute value uh, because sometimes with the minuses it gets confusing and I tend not to bother about figuring out which one's on the left and on the right. So absolute value takes care of that. And so what we're saying here is on the X axis, if we're under 35 pixels and on the Y axis, same logic, 
if we're under half of the height of the sum of both uh, the helicopters, so half of the height of the helicopter is 25, and half of the height of the obstacle is 100. So if our y coordinates of the two objects are below that, that means they've crashed into each other. And both of these conditions need to be met so that so that uh, we know we have a collision. If we do have a collision, then we call on our new pause method and it should pause the game. So let's see what happens. Mm, nothing happens, uh, which is a bit troublesome, but that's because we're not calling on this. So we, we need to call the collision detection frequently. Uh, so we're gonna say on receive and we're gonna use our timer. So we're gonna use the timer which fires every 10th of a second to call on the collision detection. So the collision detection function is going to get called on every tenth of a second and check if there is a collision. And if there is a collision, then it's going to pause the game. So now let's try this. There we go, it stops. Um, there's some glitches, but it, it worked in that it stopped the timer. This is great. So now let's, let's enhance the functionality here a little bit and um, essentially create a state for if the game is paused or not uh, because we need we need to keep track of if the game is paused or not so that if it is paused we can then go back to resuming it so if you create a state uh, property and call it is paused then we can uh, when we have a, a collision we can select the the, um, the game is paused and then we can use that then to uh, include some logic to put a button on the screen that says resume or restart. And the way we do that is we say self dot is paused question uh, mark. So it is, if it is paused, then we're going to have a button and we're going to say res restart. Um, and the action that that's going to perform is it's going to call on the restart uh, on the resume function. Sorry. And that's how we're going to resume the game after we've collided with something. If uh, the game is not paused, then do nil. Just do nothing, essentially. And what we have, oh, it's still showing, the button is showing even though we haven't crashed yet, uh, which is interesting. So let's go, let's go down and see. Oh, it's because we, we didn't put it inside the, the if statement. So, um, so now it should work because we're putting it inside the if statement when there is a collision. So there we go. When we get a collision, we we'll should see a resume, and then we can keep playing, essentially. Now, we don't want this. We want when we resume to, we want to re reset the helicopter and the obstacle to their original positions so that um, it, it looks like the game is restarting. And the way to do that is we're gonna, um, in the resume function, we're just going to add a couple of resetting of, of positions. So we're going to take the obstacle position and the, the X coordinate and move it back to a thousand, which is off the right side of the screen. And we need to also reset our helicopter back to where its starting position is. And its starting position is actually, if we scroll up, it's at a hundred, a hundred. So we're going to do a heli position equals CG point. 100, 100. And that should put the helicopter back to uh, the top left after we resume the game. There we go. So now the obstacle and the hel helicopter both get reset. Perfect. So what we can do now is add a couple of other things, which could be cool. I mean, it's already a pretty, pretty good, <laughs> essentially working game. There's some bugs that's not perfect. And this code isn't perfect either, but um, we also need to make sure that we uh, select is paused is false every time we resume. But um, <laughs> and let, let's let's test it for a little bit. It seems to be working fine. Um, so something we can do now is see if we want to implement a couple of other uh, things be before we finish. Uh, maybe we can add a something like a. Uh, maybe we can add some kind of functionality to move the obstacle vertically so it doesn't restart every time at the same position. It needs to move up and down so it looks like a new obstacle. 
So the way we're going to do that is essentially say float dot random dot random and then give it a range between which you want to get random numbers. So I'm going to say between zero and maybe 500 or 600 uh, and we should get a random number, uh, but we need it to be in CG float. So there we go. So now we should get random y coordinates. So every time the obstacle resets, it'll be at a different y position and it should look like different obstacles. Um, it seems to be working. Oh, there we go. It seems to be working all right. Uh, and yeah, you can keep playing this. And if you crash into it, you can reset it to, to the original position. There we go. And yeah, this is essentially the game. Obviously, it's not perfect. We The helicopter can leave the screen and there's other things we can do to improve. But this is essentially how the game works. One thing we could do here is if we want to, we can implement a quick score. And I'll show you how easy that is. So let's just create a new property and call it score and set it to zero. And then we're going to increment this every time, essentially every time the, the, the timer increments, we're going to increment the score. And we need to put this somewhere on the screen. So let's create a quick text field and say self.score. And we need to position it somewhere on the screen, probably on the top right. So for a position, let's give it geo. Uh, well, for the x coordinate, we'll say geo with minus like a hundred which would should put it a hundred to the left of the edge of the screen on to the on the right side and then for the height oh don't forget it's geo dot size that width and geo dot size that height and for the height let's divide the height uh by no let's divide the height by 10 so that'll be one tenth of the way down uh which would be approximately the top right um, and we need to make it a color that's not black <laughs> so we can see it. Here we go. We have our score up there and now we just need to increment this value every time. Uh, so wherever, whenever we, wherever the on receive is, uh, go there and then just do that, uh, sell that score plus or, uh, plus equal one. And that increments it every time the timer ticks. So you see there and it stops when we crash into something. The last thing to do is reset the score back to zero when you resume the game and that should put you back to zero every time you restart. There you go. And so now you have a game with a working score. Obviously this can be made much more complicated if you want to spend more time with it. You can play with different types of obstacles with um, uh, keeping track of the score so you know what the high score is. There's tons of things you can do here but hopefully this code is useful for you to get started and play with on your own. I'll throw it up on GitHub. You can get the code there if it's useful for you. Um, and hopefully if you enjoyed this, uh, hit like and subscribe and come back for more videos.